Hey guys, I know it's been a long time uh, since I have posted a video and definitely this is not the video that you were expecting to see but unfortunately life comes on the way many times and we have to do other things than our hobbies and this is one of them. This is uh, my girlfriend's car and it is uh, Mazda, I think it's 2007 or something like that, not really sure about the year but it is uh, Mazda 5 with uh, standard transmission manual and the clutch is gone. It's so badly worn that the car wouldn't even drive at all. So I'm gonna have to change the clutch and this is the new clutch I got here. I got the, got the entire kit. We have everything needed, I hope. So all we have to do is drop the transmission and change the clutch, right? <laughs> Five minutes job. Well, I've never done this on this car, on Mazda, so I don't know what's involved in it. I tried to uh, find a YouTube video or something so I can get educated a little bit but unfortunately I couldn't find anything so I'm gonna have to learn on the way I'm gonna have to improvise here and I'm gonna take you with me on the journey so hopefully if I do a good job that's gonna be a helpful video for other people who have to do that because like I said there's no videos up there of uh, Mazda 5 clutch replacement anyways so let's get started okay so first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna strip a little bit here this oh my god okay that's not gonna take a long time i guess <laughs> i want to strip a little bit here and i will see if i can have a little bit more access here and then later we're gonna lift it up in the air and put some jack stunts underneath and we're gonna see how we can access from underneath as well so yeah let me strip this first and i'm gonna bring it back the battery box the intake and everything was taken out all the electrical there were a few electrical connections here that i had to unplug and now we have a pretty good access so i didn't show that uh, in camera because it's pretty straightforward, You're just unplugging stuff and removing plastic covers and battery boxes and stuff. So now I think I have pretty good access here to all the top bolts of the transmission. So I'm just going to take out the cables here. These are the cables that control the gears, first, second, third, etc. And from there, I think next job is going to be to um, lift the car up, we'll have to get rid of the axles, half axles. Yeah, we're gonna have to do some suspension work there. And while we are there, probably we're gonna check the brakes and everything. But for now, I think we, we are done here at the top. All right, so we have the car jacked up and sitting on jack stands, so it is nice and safe. Let me test it out. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. We have plenty of room underneath. So now we can go underneath and see what's the situation here. Alright, so here obviously we have to disconnect the slave clutch cylinder. Uh, these sensors are disconnected. So basically they're just the slave cylinders and unfortunately the axles, so we have to get rid of this axle and of the other axle on the other side so we can drop the transmission down. And then and there are a few bolts like here and um, one on top that's holding it and we're going to be able to drop it a little bit. I'm concerned a little bit about this arm here but uh, hopefully we're going to be able to go around it. Anyways, let's pull out the tires and get rid of the axles first. Uh, here I'm hoping that if I'm able to disconnect the ball joint and pull the trailing arm down and maybe the tie rod on the other side, I don't know if you can see the, the tie rod end. And then I'm going to be able to swing out the entire suspension here along with the shock absorber and everything. But I'm not sure if this is going to work, but it's worth trying anyways. So let me try that. 
Okay, so I ended up removing the brake caliper, the rotor, and everything so I can get to the control arm, to the bow joint. And the bow joint is free, but that's how much it goes. So it looks like I have to remove the entire control arm from here and here at the back. The tie rod end doesn't want to go, and um, I don't want to force it because I'm going to uh, ruin the threads. So for now, I'm going to leave it on. And the other thing is, uh, I don't have the socket, 32 mil socket. Nope, didn't think of that before. And uh, usually when I need such big sockets, I have a colleague here who has uh, a set of big sockets, but unfortunately he's uh, not here right now because it is uh, holiday and his toolbox is locked. So I don't have a socket for here. And what I'm thinking is, once I get the control arm away, without removing the tie rod end and without removing the this nut from here, I can just swing out the entire uh, axle together with the shock and everything and pull it out. Hopefully. I don't know if this is going to work, but I can try. And if this doesn't work, then I'm going to go home and I'm going to come back with a socket for here. <laughs> but let's see. So first I'm going to start removing those bolts from there and drop the control arm down. Okay, the bolts are out, so supposedly now this should drop down in the back. Mm -hmm. Maybe the axle is going to come too. I think it has enough swing, maybe, to pull out the axle from the transmission. Okay. And we started making oil. I didn't think of that. Check if we have enough swing to pull it out. Or not. Looks like not. Maybe the stabilizer needs to come out too. Yeah, let's start, take out the stabilizer because I still think that we should be able to pull it out. To the right, that might help. Okay, it's out. Whew. Yeah, that would be a good idea. I'm gonna drain that all the fluid. That would have been a good idea before, right? Wasn't it? Anyway, so one is done. I'm thinking about the possibility not to disassemble the right suspension because the transmission obviously needs to come this way and that axle is gonna be supposedly... It's not gonna be on the way, it's just gonna come out. I think it's time to start, start removing the slave cylinder for the clutch. And then we will see here with this bracket, on this side, this is what holds the transmission up and the entire engine, of course. So I think we're going to support the engine with a jack underneath. We're going to remove this bolt and remove this entire bracket. But then I think this bracket has to be removed too because it's not going to allow us to slide it out. Uh, there is a plastic cover that we're going to remove from over there, from the wheel well and that's gonna allow us to slide it. Let me show you. It's a bit dark here. Okay, 
So this cover here is coming off and that's gonna allow us to slide the transmission out. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna go underneath and remove the slave cylinder. Of course you can come with me guys. So that's 12 obviously. <clears throat> It's tight, obviously. here on the brake line. And I'm gonna remove a couple of these bolts now, if I can. And the bottom ones, I'm gonna leave only the top ones for later. I'm gonna have to remove this bracket as well, which is engine mount basically, so we have to remove this. Well, so many things to remove. Okay, so my plan is now, I'm gonna put a jack on this area here. I'm gonna lift the transmission and the engine together up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna remove this bracket. I'm laying on the floor, so I'm showing with my foot here. So I'm gonna remove this mount, this uh, engine mount or transmission mount. I'm gonna remove the one on top right here and then I'm gonna drop the jack as much as possible down and uh, at some point I'm gonna support the engine with a jack stand on, the, on there and then I'm gonna remove I already started removing some of the bolts on the transmission there's a bolt here, a bolt here going this way, a bolt here so I started removing this but when I drop it down as much as possible and then support the engine with the jack stand and then I'm gonna remove the rest from the top and I'm gonna slide the transmission out, supposedly, so that's the plan. This sensor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that the other end of this cable is unplugged so we don't screw up something. But yeah, now this is free here, so now we're gonna go on top and release the other bracket that's holding the engine and the transmission in place. And then we're gonna drop the entire thing a little bit down, not much, a little bit, and we're gonna support the engine here with a jack stand. That's the one I'm talking about. So now basically the transmission is free to go down, but I'm still afraid that this bracket is not going to let me slide it out. So I better remove this bracket as well. It's held by three bolts to the transmission, so let me see if I can take them out. Everything else is detached. This cable that we were talking about, it is unplugged. So there's nothing else, else but the bolts that hold the transmission in place. Actually, instead of jack stand, I put a hydraulic jack so I can play with it up and down if I want to. And now uh, this one can go away. Now, if you're watching my channel regularly, you know about uh, Eugene who always gives me tools, like he gives me so many tools, tools it's incredible. Hi Eugene, <laughs> thank you for all the tools. So 
He also gave me this uh, transmission stand or transmission thing, or I don't know what should I call it, uh, that goes on a jack like this. So we just have to remove this plate and put this. Now, now the adapter that it came with was a little bit too big, so I turned it on the, on the lathe a little bit, so now it fits here. So now all we have to do is just put this up there. And, and this is also adjustable. You can adjust the angle here, which is perfect. You can adjust this, mount the transmission and even chain it with this chain so it doesn't go anywhere. Huh? Now it's nice and light. Before somebody screwed up the settings on my camera. Sorry about before guys, it was a little bit too dark. And I have to put the jack on the other side. So I should be able to move the transmission back and forth when I need to. Probably you're not going to see the bolts here, but there are a few more bolts. I'll, I'll tell you how many. And I'm going to take them out. All right, guys, there are only three bolts here at the top that I managed to take out. Like they're really visible here. But there is one which is at the back, and it's over there where the exhaust pipes are. And uh, if you can see, my wrench is sitting on it. So that's really, really hard to reach but I managed to get to it so now uh, and it's loose already so now I'm just gonna take it out I guess you're not gonna see anything because I'm on the, I'm gonna be on your way but that's what I'm talking about this bolt here so it goes at the back well, maybe you can see I don't know. good thing it's going by hand I mean, I managed to loosen it with the screw, with the wrench, and now it's going back here. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna put it back. Whew, this guy. Okay, so now I think all the bolts are out. So I'm gonna go underneath and I'm gonna try to just crack it open. Right beside this bolt, the one that I took from uh, by, uh, from behind, there is another one I just saw from underneath. So I'm gonna go underneath. I'm not sure if you're gonna see what I'm doing there, but let's try. Okay, I thought the other boat was tricky, but this one is trickier. So you see where my wrench is? That's where the other boat is, and it is like disaster to reach it, but I managed to put the wrench on it and undo it, so now I'm gonna loosen it, and supposedly that's the last uh, fastener that holds the transmission in place. So everything else is disconnected. I can't even take it out because it's hitting the uh, exhaust, but that's fine. I'm gonna drop it down a little. So you see how the, the other axle remained there and we didn't need to take it out. the release bearing that we'll have to change to 
just in case. Ooh, it stinks. It stinks like clutch. And now, as a beginning, I'm gonna put the alignment to inside so it doesn't fall on my face while I'm doing it. And then I'm gonna move the light down here so I can see what I'm doing actually. Okay, so first we're gonna break them loose. Easy to say, huh? <laughs> oh my god, where's the clutch? <laughs> There's no clutch material on it. <laughs> uh, at least the flywheel is good. Okay. <laughs> so here it should be marked somewhere. That's the way the clutch goes with the convex part out, convex I should say, but somewhere here it should say flywheel side. It doesn't, but this is the way, that's how it goes, like this, and then we're gonna put the tool inside to align it, because if it's not aligned we will never be able to put the transmission back on, right? So, <clears throat> and here's our new plate. This, right? Okay. And now it would be a great idea to find the torque spec for this and see what the torque is for the bolt. So, because it still has a little bit of play, I'll make sure that it is right in the center. And I'm gonna drive the bolts in slowly, slowly. All of them, a little by little. So now, I'm gonna go and check online if I can find the torque spec, and then we'll go from there. All right, found online. Uh, PDF file with all the torque specs for Mazda and it says 19 to 24 foot-pounds for the clutch plate, so that's what we're gonna do now Okay, I think they're already there Yeah the Release bearing So there are two floats here that need to, like they're like clips, they look like. So they need to go into these little tabs, these little tabs need to go into these two slots and they have to click, I guess. Okay, mm. okay. now they clicked have to make sure that it travels easy I mean because the bearing needs to be able to swivel on the fork like if this is the fork the bearing should be able to swivel like that otherwise it's not gonna be able to travel in and out because you see when it is out the angle here between the fork and the bearing is more than 19 degree but when it's all the way up it's less than 90 degree so the, the bearing should be able to swivel on the fork and that's it so now let's see if we can reassemble everything
Okay, now it's a matter of alignment here to make sure that the shaft from the transmission goes through the splines on the clutch and inside that little bearing. And here also I have to make sure that the axle at the back lines up with its uh, splines, which it almost does. So good thing this uh, this uh, support, transmission support that Eugene gave me has the, all these adjustments. So I can tip it a little bit. Well, if it was changed properly. Okay. In that. Now the axle is in. So let's see if everything else is going to line up. Looks like this hole line up pretty much where they're supposed to be. So that's good. Let me try and push it now in. It's almost there. I'm gonna put some of the bolt loosely loose so they give me some alignment. Alright, I have one at the top started as well, which means that everything is aligned. Well, now I can take this jack away. Okay, I will try with the bolts very gently, like really gently. And if it doesn't want to move, then I'm going to stop. Oh, but it's moving, like absolutely no pressure, so that's fine. And the top one is almost closed, I just checked. Yeah, okay. So it's coming home. Okay, so after I tighten the bolt on top, everything lined up. The flanges here closed up properly and then I managed to put all the bolts that hold the transmission to the engine and I tightened them so this is all done now. So I don't think I'm gonna show you everything else in too many details because we already saw it so now I'm gonna put back the slave cylinder, I'm gonna put back that uh, mount, the rear engine mount, then I'm gonna put the side engine mount here or the transmission mount at the front at the top and then I think I'm gonna assemble the suspension and I'm gonna be able to drop the car down and then finish everything on top in the engine bay. Okay, I don't know if you see well but the engine mount underneath is assembled. The one on top, this one here, is assembled so now the engine and the transmission are supporting themselves with the mounts so I don't need the jacks anymore and now I think the next thing is gonna be the suspension here. I wanna put the axle back and the suspension and I have to fill up with oil again. I shouldn't forget that I drained the oil from the transmission right but I don't wanna do that before I install the axle back. Alright, everything is assembled Everything is assembled and let's see if it's gonna start the audio sample. Let's see if it's There's a little bit room at the back and in the front, that's gonna be just enough. because I gave my own car to my girlfriend to drive while this one was on uh, in service <laughs> so I didn't have a car for a while and I was using uh, my Triumph, my uh, bike or other things so now finally I have a car maybe I'm gonna drive this for a little while and I'm, I'm gonna have to give some, my girlfriend some driving lessons because 
she never drove standard before and she managed to ruin the clutch very fast. I don't blame her, I did the same thing when I was a kid, so <clears throat> when I first started driving. So anyways, she will need some lessons, but I'm happy that finally the car is done and she's going to be happy too as well. So thanks for watching guys. Oh actually, stay tuned because on this car we're going to install an aftermarket stereo too and uh, it's going to be uh, one of these smart stereos with uh, Wi-Fi and stuff like that so it's going to be an interesting video as well so stay tuned for that I know I've been a little bit off my triumphs but uh, unfortunately we have to take care of the daily drivers away, uh, as well so I'm going to probably post uh, one or two or maybe three more videos about daily drivers before I go back to the triumphs live, right? Anyway, so thanks for watching guys, thanks for commenting and subscribing and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!